And so it was a white Dutchman that kicked a black man out of his office. And that led to a wild strike. And from that came, uh, how you call it, uh, a solidarity strike. Mm -hmm. The shell also closed down. And that was an important historical fact. It has, it has never been before able to sh close down the shell. Because the shell was very powerful. It would always organize counter um, methods so that you could not close it down. That day too, it was very difficult to close down the shell because the shell, when we closed down post five, the shell opened other gates organized transportation, you know, so you had a big enemy against you, know, yeah. because there were always strike breakers, no? But it, we, we succeeded. And we had, perhaps from, from 67, when the, I was in jail, mm -hmm. thought, still that moment, I had thought that the revolution would be done by my generation. We, the young people, I uh, used to say, we'll take up this stick that our fathers dropped out of their hands and go on with the fight. But when the police really came with police dogs and batons and started beating up young people, uh, I saw that they ran. So then, uh, when I in jail, I think, you know, you cannot fight with young people. They are not revolutionaries. You must fight with laborers. So when I came out of jail, I tried to reorganize the labor unions mm -hmm. that were just coming up on the island. We didn't have many labor unions at that moment yet. We had the harbor. We had the main mascapay. We had the shell. That was about it. The others were busy organizing, but had not come to a CAO as yet, because people that joined the labor union were discharged. School teachers did not even have a labor union at those days. So I tried to make them feel solidarity with other, you know. I used to tell them, if anywhere a laborer is in a strike, you cannot go to your work. You must stand behind him, because it is a war. It's a war against the system. And that started working on 29th of May. They, 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 they came up with a solidarity movement. Mm -hmm. The harbor with Godet striked. The main mascapay with Villiers striked. The dog mascapay kept a walkout. The hospital held a walkout. So at a certain moment, we were getting a general strike, and then Godet took over the leadership on that day, and he said to the people, we are not sending no commission or nothing, thing. we all are marching to the town, and we're going to send the government at home and establish a labor government. What was the principal idea of the Vito movement? So the union joined. And then while we started marching, the slogan was equal pay for equal job. But on the road, the slogan gradually changed. Today, white people are going to learn to respect black people. So you see, the racial hate that was there from the time of slavery and that was passed over from generation to generation to the time of colonialism, and then from the time of higher and fire capitalism, suddenly erupted in the feelings of the people. And when they reached Cerro Pitamai, the ending of the march, Nelly, they liquidated two people. Um, one by a who did? Who did that? Well, the, the, there was a barricade of police. And there was in the restaurant upstairs a sniper, um, probably a Dutch police. And he, he had a gun because the bullet 
that liquidated Gutierrez is different than the other bullets that were found where the police fired. So then we know there was a sniper with a rifle. And Guillotine, he was killed by a police bullet because he was not really part of the revolution. He was sitting on the wall of the cemetery drinking a bottle of whiskey and a bullet skirmished on the ground and hit him in his mouth. It was not shot. But um, Gutierrez, who had um, the, the, how you call that, uh, fire brigade truck, and that had been lighted on fire, and they were pushing it on the barricade to break the barricade. The police shot the tires so that the fire brigade truck went against the sidewalk and did not walk on. So then Gutierrez stood up of Venezuela. He said, when in my country we meet the police, that is the time a revolution starts. If I am killed, follow my blood. And he went into the truck and he turned the steering wheel so that the people could push the truck on the police. And when he stepped out of the truck, they shot him in his back. Head. <clears throat> and Godet was the same thing. He was trying to calm the people. He said, we have reached far enough for the march. Um, let us form a commission and go to the 40 and put our ex, what, what we want, uh, in front of the government, no? for the government to make a decision. And while talking to people, they shot him in the back too. And that made from the organized march, the organized revolution, uh, anarchism. Yeah. The emotions exploded. That's when they started burning. Burning and, 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 and rioting and, and doing all kinds of things that were not no part of the, 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 the plan anymore. No? They, especially, and why, especially because when they shot Godet, the leaders of the march, just Willie Hayes and Onakui and U.B. Spencer and all these people, instead of staying in their position, they went in a car with Godet emotionally, you know, their friend, you know, to the hospital. And then the march was without leaders. You know. So then, the, let us say, the radicals in the march took over leadership and, and started destroying things, going into the town anyhow. Uh, at that time, the building, Tauber, was already on fire. And the El Louvre, in the Herasatu, you know, over Main Street, was also already on fire. So some of the fire um, developed through wind. You know, we have a very strong wind. Yes. And that helps the fire to... to, to but at, at that moment, where were you? I was partly, as I, was, as I tell you, I'm the Voltaire, I'm organizing. Mm. Uh, when... Um, Martis did not want to call a strike, and I had put him in power. Mm -hmm. He got sick, went to the hospital. I have him on the phone. You have to call a strike. What the hell? Who the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? You have to call, you know? So I'm organizing for the strike to be told totally. And at a certain moment, when I realized, I had 82 people selling Vito, of which 20 had... Uh, a Bromet, a motorcycle. motorcycle. And um, I was in contact all the time, what is happening, what must happen, you know? Like when they went into Texas Instruments on the alcohol influence, but they were not drunk because you must see there are four or five thousand people. How much bottles of alcohol could have been in Nobrega? And in Anderson, they got 4,000 people drunk. There were some people that were drinking, you know, but the, the mass was sober. But the ones that had alcohol in them and, you know, adrenaline, Texas gentlemen only had women employees, nearly a few men. You know? 
So they went into there molesting women, and the men locked them up in rooms, you know, and started to defend them and so. So then you get you you contact the leader, no? So then Godet take the mic, and he says, "Every labor has to leave Texas Instruments right now, otherwise I will come in and kick him out." You know. So then they left. Um, when they shot him, <coughs> I lost contact because what happens to the twenty boys who have your bromat and are your messengers? They see everybody stealing. They start stealing too. They're poor people, no? I remember the last two. They tell me, Brown, look, look, look. I can't keep on being your messenger, and I need a television at home. You know, <laughs> you lost. You don't have contact no more. It's not that you have cellular in those days that you could keep ringing. No? Mm. So then I went to Otrobanda, and I walked over the bridge. And went. Uh, there's something I have not really mentioned all these days, but you know you keep on remembering what happened. I walked to the union, labor union um, center. No, mm -hmm. that was very common from Kopanal is now. And I was surprised. <coughs> I saw Kunko, a friend of mine from Crow Quartier, a bodyguard, strong man, drunkard. You know, everybody scared of him, sitting down in front of the uh, labor union unions. And I say, well, what's happening, Kungu? He said, Brown, look, I tried to stop them, but nobody is listening. So then I went inside. They were breaking up their own institution, you know, breaking up chairs, breaking up table, robbing the bar, you know, breaking the telephone. So then I tell Kungo, come, the both of us are going to stop them. So then we stopped them, and I found a chain with a lock. I locked the door with a chain, and I gave Kungo the key. I said, Kungo, when on a queen of honor them come, you give only on a queen the queen of honor. <laughs>